The basic question of the film is about is about this argument about nuclear waste. Okay, can it, is it possible to to resolve the problem of, of the nuclear waste? Um, and you could you could do the film on that level. You could sort of uh, you know you could have this guy saying no and that guy saying yes. We will find a solution eventually. It's just a question of applying science, and science has always given us the answer if we work hard enough. Uh, and then somebody else saying, ah, oh, but the radioactivity is killing everybody. And you could have this sort of tennis match, you know. People could sort of, one, and, and I, my feeling is that uh, two things about that. First of all, people watching this won't be able to make up their minds who's right. Or, you know, the kind of audience that you're considering. They won't understand enough of the technical detail there to work out what's right. And so they will operate on the basis of who they like. And that might work as well. So it might be good to say, well, they like this guy and they don't like that guy. But really, that's, that, that doesn't address, to my mind, the, the main problem which I was talking about it, it, just now in the room and which you wanted me to cover again. Mm. Um, and I've, I've thought about this whole, this whole area for, for many, many years. And, and what I've, each time I've, I've looked at a problem, I've, I've stepped back from it and tried to see what's behind that problem. And then I've stepped back from that to see then what's behind that problem. So a lot of people will say that the problem with nuclear is associated with the problem of capitalism, the problem of the need for energy. Uh, and the energy is needed to fuel capitalism, to fuel the, 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 the sale of goods to each other so that, so that there can be a general increase in the, in the, in the amount of money, if you like, or, or that kind of value in the world. So that's one, way, one, one position that you can walk back from it all. But then, then I don't think that answers it either, because then you, you're left with another question, which is why do people want all this money and power and influence and all the rest of it, you see? So you need to step back from that as well. And a simple way to argue would be to say, ah, oh, well, it's human nature. And of course, a lot of people do that too. Um, and and uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the American anthropologists uh, of the Robert Ardrey school and the kind of 1930s um, physical anthropology people and the, the, the monkey studying people who wanted to try and uh, approach the problem of human existence through the examination of monkey societies, those sort of anthropolo anthropological discussions would then bring us around to a belief or a suggestion that, that the problem is one of human nature. But again, you see, what does that mean, human nature? Because, I mean, I now step back from human nature and say, what are we talking about there, you see? So, so we started off with nuclear waste, and we've gone back to the technical details associated with, with, uh, with, with why you should or shouldn't have uh, to deal with nuclear waste. And then we step back from that to say, well, why do we need it anyway because of the energy? And we step back from that and we say, well, that's because of society's need for energy, because of capitalism. We step back from that and we say, this is because of human nature. And we have all the experimental and... and, and, and uh, other data which informs us that human nature is such that we need to do these things. But then now I want to step back from that. I want to go one stage further and start to investigate the question of human nature. So what is it, I ask myself, that makes some people oppose nuclear and other people um, develop or, 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 or embrace nuclear on some kind of level which is far beyond anything scientific or rational? on some kind of level which is almost magical. There's a sort of, there, there, are sets, there are people who are emotionally in love with nuclear power and with the kinds of energy and the force and the violence and the kind of uh, association that it has with the, dis with the control of nature. That, that, that makes it sort of fundamental to their psychology and to their, and to their identity and to their survival. This is the point. And the other people who hate it for almost the same reason, but in reverse, if you like, because it threatens their identity and their understanding of human nature and their survival. Uh, and the lines of battle are very, very easily seen when you go to meetings uh, involving nuclear scientists or involving anti-nuclear people. You find that there are many more women in the anti-nuclear movement and very, very, very more men in the, if you like, the nuclear movement, okay, the cult of the nuclearists. And the other thing that you notice if you've been around long enough is that the, is that the men are, 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 are usually, what I would say, 
very ultra rational uh, and and dressed in in suits and and fairly dull clo dull colored clothing they're conventional people they have conventional hairstyles which are always just so and if we go to the other extreme to the anti nuclear people we find that the that the women and the men in the anti nuclear movement are, they dress like crazies you know they have reds and greens and blues and you won't find uh, many people in suits in the anti nuclear movement you know they won't wear them so that this is a clue to me one of many clues to to what's going on here because i believe this that all of the problems in the world you know ultimately from hist from the problems of, of of human nature the problem of the manifestation of human nature throughout history through religion through wars through through the suppression of women by men, through the, the way in which women consider men to be children and, 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 and laugh at them, the sort of general war between the sexes, if you like, you know, the, the, the encapsulated in the statement that men make, ah, oh, women, you know, can't live with them, can't live without them. Bring me back to the first scientists, Roger Bacon, at the time of Queen Elizabeth, 15-something, who said to her, Madam, we will tame the whore nature. So, to, so to my mind, what's happening here is, is a split between types of people al along the lines of fear of chaos and control. So what we're seeing here with the nuclear scientists is a desperate need to control their environment and their lives and the forces that might affect their lives in some way by, by creating a virtual universe which they can deal with through mathematics and with drawing straight lines on pieces of paper and the illusion that they can somehow save themselves from the, the screaming chaos that, that, that the world really is by analysis and, 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 and uh, control. And that's the attraction of nuclear. That is the attraction of nuclear. It, it, it has this fearful attraction of being able to control nature. And behind that is the belief that you can somehow control the, the, the dangerousness of, of the, uh, if you like, the raw relative to the cooked, as, as the anthropologist Levi, Levi Bruhl identified by analyzing um, uh, folk tales, you know, because in every folk tale you have the raw and the cooked, you have a kind of control side of it, you know, and you have a, a fearful sort of mad side of it. Now the fearful mad side of it is the real side, this is where we really live, you see, to my mind this is where we really live, the real universe is chaotic and it's wonderful, you see, because you can, you can embrace this wonder of the chaotic universe, you can embrace the women and the wetness and the warmth and the sexuality and the violence and the madness and all that stuff. That's real, and that's actually real inside all of us. There's some part of us which, which is like that. But in the case of these people who do the nuclear stuff, at a very early age, I believe, they suppressed that. They found it fearful, and they decided to become mathematicians or physicists or whatever, so they didn't go out into the playground, they didn't get rowdy, they didn't, you know, fight and shoot around the place, kicking people and, and, and you know, embracing the women and all this kind of stuff. They put themselves in this kind of mathematical box. And this is where they are. And so really when these arguments take place, like many arguments, like many arguments between men and women on substantive issues like what color of carpet you're going to buy, which can turn into mad arguments, you know, where people knife each other or leave each other or run off with the milkman or whatever. These arguments are really not arguments about the issue of whether the carpet is green or whether the carpet is blue. And in the case of the nuclear arguments, it's not really about whether radiation is safe or isn't safe. Behind it all is an argument about control and chaos. This is what I believe. And I think as far as your film is concerned, what I would, what I would do if I were doing that film is rather than just kind of lay out all the little kind of minutiae of the DNA decays and the ICRP risk model and all that, and I think you have to have that in some sense, but you don't want to major on that. This is my feeling. You want to actually major on the much more interesting question, which is the type of person who wants to have nuclear power and wants to have, you know, um, a solution to disposal and, and which are always which are always you notice when they present these things 
not presented in terms of the real world, you see. If you take Forschmark as this like, big Swedish repository that that's being proposed as an ultimate solution to all of this, when they present the Forschmark solution, they don't show you a photograph of the land at Forschmark with the trees and, the, and, 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 and all the diggers pulling up the soil and all this stuff. What you see is a kind of idealized diagram drawn by some graphic artist, you know, where the grass is always the same shade of green and the trees are put in like little sort of virtual trees all over the place and people are walking about with dogs afterwards to show how, how, how safe it all is, you know. But in your cutaway you can see, because you're the scientist, all these sort of fantastically um, stainless metallic, you know, objects buried underneath the ground safely where they're not going to affect these idealized people with their children walking through the sunshine in the park that has been created above this nuclear waste repository. The real world isn't like that, you see. I mean, we go out into the real world and they see it and the mud is mud and it's wet and it's horrible, you know, and the trees are decaying and they're birds and they're creatures and so on, you know. They don't look like the pictures that they draw. And those are just the pictures because the reality for them is not the pictures, it's like a huge table of numbers, you know? It's a big mathematical table with, with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of numbers and it's computer programs and it's guys sitting there and putting in parameters into integral equations with lots and lots of Greek letters and so on. And that makes them feel safe, you see? Because they've come away from the real world of its wetness and its, and its, uh, its possible glaciation and global warming and tornadoes and hurricanes and women and sex, and violence, and children screaming, and nap dirty nappies, and, and feces, and all that stuff. They've come away from that, and they've turned it into these equations. Mm. And there they are. And this, I think this is what, what, what I would present. I would present the reduction of the real chaos of the world to mathematical equations, which make these people feel safe. And so when you attack them, you know, and you say to them, you know, well, well, really, not this one. This, this was the ice you're looking at, was this one. Um, this one. This is, this is a good example of the reduction of... Re of this is the IC, International Commission on Radiological Units and Measurements. And here we have a good example of the reduction of reality to a, to, to, to a set of numbers. And these numbers arise out of the application of some monstrous equation, which we've got somewhere back here, but that was developed by some mathematicians. Well, here you are. There's, there's, an, there's a good one here. The beta equations. There we are. You see this one. So those numbers arise out of this equation, you see. But, but, but this is one way of seeing the world. And this equation relates to real tissue. Ultimately, what this is trying to do is it's trying to describe real living tissue in a real living human being, you know, with real thoughts and fears and wonders and loves and hatreds and, 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 and projects, which are, which, which are possibly dangerous projects, you know, but this is what they've become for the people who want to turn this world into something that they can deal with so that they don't have to think about all the chaos out there and all the anger and the fury and the love and the hatred and all the real things that people are really involved in. And I'm afraid the world has become a place where we're increasingly ruled by these people who try to imagine that objectivity can be developed through mathematical equations. Whereas, of course, there's no objectivity. None. And this is what we need to show. This is what somebody needs to show. And I can tell you that nuclear is, is one of the best hooks on which to show this. Because nuclear is, is such, a, such a perfect example of the dissonance between the two ways of seeing the world. And, and the way that we're going as a human race on, on Earth is a way that has been defined now for, for 50 years or more, maybe, maybe 100 years since the beginning of the logical positive school of philosophy a way in which we're going to destroy ourselves by, by science-assisted collisions with reality. And this is a science-assisted collision with reality. Because science doesn't give us the truth. It only gives us a partial truth, and sometimes that partial truth is completely wrong. And in the case of nuclear, it is completely wrong. And millions of people have died because of this.
and we have to stop it.